the new book, Act Tongue, Baby, An American Mom on the German Art of Raising Self-Reliant Children. Sarah Zasky, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Oh, thank you for having me. Tell us the quick story. You found yourself in Germany with a couple of kids? Yeah, I lived in Germany for six and a half years. We moved there when my daughter was two and a half, and my son was born there. And you realize that they raise children very differently in Germany than they do here? Yes, uh, I first noticed it on the playgrounds. Um, one time I was on the playground and I noticed a kid had climbed on the outside of the structure and was dangling some 10 feet above the ground. And I'm yelling, Achtung, you know, watch out. And all the parents don't seem to be interested. They were on the side. And, you know, he dropped down and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> and and what did you deduce from that? Well, um, they seem to trust their children to know what they can and cannot do on a playground, and uh, their their playgrounds are way more risky than ours. So it's kind of like a self testing area, which actually I found later. It, I became convinced that that's really good for kids. Because the kids learn that when they fall, it hurts, so they're more careful <laughs> when they're climbing up the monkey bars. Exactly. Yeah. So do you think we're too heli parents here are too uh, helicoptery? Yes. Um, you know, that opportunity to uh, you know go out and conquer your fears and determine what you can and cannot do that really gives a kid a sense of um, capability and pride. And I think our kids sometimes, if we're already always watching them and always telling them, no, you can't do that, they don't get that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because th th there's much more freedom, as you say, with the children, and they're much more allowed to go out and play and sort of set their own rules. But there's also a number of things that the parents have as rights in Germany that we do not have in this country. That's true. They have um, child care um, pretty much from age three to six, almost, uh, almost totally paid for, at least in Berlin. Um, it's heavily subsidized by the government. Um, and also after school care is fairly common, and that makes it a lot easier for the parents. So you're saying, wait, so you're saying that child care is heavily subsidized by, by the German government? The government. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Um, what about, um, is, what it, a, is it true homeschooling is illegal in Germany? That is true. Their uh, philosophy is that children have the right to society. They have the right to the company of other children and that you can't keep them home. You can, however, you know, form your own school. What was, I mean, so all of, how, how long were you there? I was there for six and a half years. And so uh, is it better or worse to raise your kids in Germany as opposed to the U.S.? Well, I think at least for the elementary school years, it's better. I, I feel very grateful that my kids got to go to kindergarten in, in Germany, the land that invented kindergarten. Um, there it's all about play, and it really gave them a really good foundation for uh, starting school and getting along with other kids. Um, you, but you write in the book, Act Tong Baby, an American Mom on the German Art of Raising Self-Reliant Children, you say that in kindergarten, teachers are trained professionals. They spend more time teaching math and reading, but you said kindergarten. So I, 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 ex explain to me the difference of a kindergarten there versus here. Well, a kindergarten in Germany is all about play. They don't do formal lessons where you sit down and do worksheets or teach, uh, do math problems, or um, learn, start to learn to read. Uh, the focus is more on social skills and um, learning concentration and engaging their own curiosity. So there's no formal curriculum. And because there's no formal curriculum, why is that better for the kid? Well, they get a chance to do self-directed learning. The, at Arkita, the kids chose projects to do and voted on them. So it was from them, they were interested in it, and then they would ask questions about it and find ways to get the answers. Like sometimes they go to a museum or they invite in an expert, um, read books, and they started to learn, you know, the investigative process of learning. And they're more motivated and engaged because it came from the kids and not top down from the, from the teacher. So do you think there's enough direction, though, for children in learning? Well, I think for that age, it's perfect. 
Um, there's not a lot of evidence that teaching reading at, at an early age has any advantage. Um, by the If a child is reading early at four, by the time they're 10 and 11, the late readers have caught up. Uh, do German parents drive their kids to school? Uh, not in Berlin. <laughs> uh, they, most of the kids walk to school in a big city uh, without their parents in attendance. How, how, how young are the kids walking to school? Second grade, so eight, nine. Hmm. Uh, tell us the story about the woman in Germany who, tr or the, the German woman who left her stroller outside when she went in to go get something to eat at the store. Uh, yeah, well, that's fairly common, and that shocked me. Um, we were actually in a cafe, so I was sitting at the window. I see her pull up with the stroller, and she's with her parents, and the three of them go inside and leave the baby outside on a winter day. <laughs> and, of course, my first thought in my American mind was, somebody's going to steal the baby. <laughs> but um, even as I, I said that to my friend, I realized it's sort of ridiculous because it doesn't really happen very often, and we're all sitting there and we can see the stroller. And so are you saying it doesn't happen there versus here, or are you questioning why we're so paranoid about our children being stolen because it almost never happens? Uh, the latter. Uh, it, it almost never happens anywhere. Right. I mean, yeah. And the likelihood of some crazy person running off with the kid is, is very low. Sarah Zansky is our guest. The book is An American Mom on the German Art of Raising Self-Reliant Children. Sarah, what's been the reaction to this book? Because you are challenging a lot of norms um, that people, right? You have to drive them to school. You have to protect them. You have to have a safe uh, jungle gym. You have to teach them 24 hours a day. Uh, forget this playing around. What's been the reaction to the book? Well, I think it's been a, a very positive. People are interested that another major world, uh, major world power, Germany, can do these these things while we have become very uh, protective, and it, it kind of challenges the notion that we're not being they're not being safe because you know their kids are not being injured or abducted any at any higher rates than here. You also note that a Danish woman left her child in a stroller in New York City, and she was arrested for it. Yeah, that was some time ago. But, um, yeah, <laughs> that is way beyond our cultural norms, I think, or our, our idea of safety. Interesting stuff. Sarah Zanke, uh, Z Z Zasky? Zasky. Z yes, that's correct. Yeah, Sarah Zasky. The book is Act Tongue, Baby, An American Mom on the German Art of Raising Self-Reliant Children. Sarah, good luck with the book. Thanks for checking in.